was looking to ask that question is because if if the answer was yes, right, then then technically there's no feasible way that 75% would ever really ever, ever, ever be met because of the CIAC regulations, but it doesn't look like there is on that step. Okay. Thank you. But you still have to shut your team down, right? When the, when the high school softball season starts, no, no kid can play on your team, right? Oh yeah. Well, I coach at the high school, so they're playing okay. for me there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we, we technically can't once from March, I think this year was March 21st this year through the last day of the state tournament, any high school girl in the state of Connecticut cannot play on yeah. the team. So they where do you guys, where do you guys practice this week then? Where if you're not in paying for a field in Berlin, so you're not holding, you're not going anywhere in Britain or no place. We have, we have um, one person that we know in Plainville, and occasionally they'll sneak us onto the little league field there, but that's about it. So we we're basically playing on the weekends. Yes, you know, like I said yesterday, we had a game at Sage. Um, because we just have we, we have to squeeze games in here and there. Yeah. Um, we'd like to obviously put, be more consistent and play more in, in in Berlin than driving all over the state to play. But uh, do the you know, uh, does the other team, the Bulldog team, are they playing in Berlin? Are they renting fields in Berlin? They're yes. playing. I I can't tell you the rest of it. Yes, they are renting fields in Berlin. One of them is local. One of them is non-local. Correct. Local okay. meaning they have yeah. more than seventy five percent, and that team Correct. doesn't have to pay play uh, pay for the field usage. No, they they are one of oh, one of the, one of his teams is a local team because it's at eighty percent. They've been playing for two weeks now and been paying local fees. The other team we just got the roster and the field reservation today because that team is starting later and he's already agreed. He knows he needs to pay. He sent us the roster to show that he's out of town. Has already agreed to pay out of town fees. Okay. I think the, the 16U has one Berlin girl on it, so that's why. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Michael, Michael, I'm sure, I'm sure Jen told you, right? So in full transparency, you're not the first organization that's come to us to ask us to waive. And, you know, we've been pretty, we've been pretty consistent with our policy only because of the, of the exceptions and what then exceptions do to the rules, as you can know, being in. You know what I'm saying? So we'll have to debate it and see what what we want to do. I, I I I hear your pain. I it's a it's a it's a bad situation. You know, in all honesty, the only thing I ask you to really take into consideration is I know we don't meet that 75 percent, but it's not because of us not trying. We just truly right. really don't have the numbers to meet that in Berlin. Right. And you know. To be honest, it's only more beneficial for the the, the April and parents and April and kids to get their development in place. They get to work. I'm not, you know, I'm not bragging, but they get to work with me as a JV coach too in the off season now, and then I can help them, you know, learn the system better and things like that. That's all I ask that you take into consideration. Yeah. You know, yeah. Do, do, Donna and I have history. We've been involved with softball and little league and all that stuff, so we we know what you're talking about. We we appreciate it. <laughs> we really do. <laughs> no, I understand. Any other questions, comments? Okay, so Mike, uh, we'll obviously talk about it tonight during our meeting. Uh, Jen would get back to you tomorrow with the, you know, if there was a vote taken or, or the discussion, give you an update. Um, and I know, I th think you're in your car, so you can feel free to drop off. I appreciate it, everybody. Thank you very much for your time. Mike, okay. just so you know, I am in interviews all morning, so you will not hear from me till tomorrow afternoon. Okay, that's fine. Just didn't want you waiting. Thanks. Yeah, good. Michael, good. thank yeah. you. All right, thanks, Thank you. All right, thank you. Have a good night. Yep, bye. Okay, is any other audience of citizen members? I know there was none on the agenda. Just want to make sure no one's called in. Okay. Dennis, yeah. you're back. I see you. Okay. So, so, so Donna, look, there's still a call, a user five and a, a, a Mark Cal Caldrean at the bottom. Can you see those? Who are they? I can't. I, I don't see them. I'm going to unmute them for a second. Uh, see, there's Joe or Steve, is this you? Yeah, this is Steve. I'm on. 
All okay. right, Steve. Steve, do you have any idea around what time you joined? Just for the record. Five. I I joined at five fourteen when Leo was talking. Okay, Dana, you got that. All right. I don't know who the other person is. You don't have to identify yourself, so that's fine. And MC MC just dropped. Okay, it could have been one of Mike's parents that he had <laughs> information to. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So with that, um, let's move to the approval of minutes. The minutes were um, sent along in the packet. Um, hopefully people got a chance to read them. Can I have a motion to accept the June 11th minutes? I'll make a motion to accept the June 11th uh, minutes. Second. Thank you, Tony. Any discussion or comments? Okay. With that, um, all in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. It's unanimous. All right. Uh, consent agenda. We <clears throat> Let's take what's on the written consent agenda. We and can, then we can delete B. They found another location, so we can delete B. Okay. So uh, can I have a... Okay, I'm hearing some feedback. Uh, Dinesh, I think it's your... Com yeah, there you go. You're... Yep. If you, you can feel free, Dinesh, if you have any questions, maybe do that chat and that, okay, that would work. Okay. Um, so could I have a motion to accept consent agenda A, which is for the high school boosters to sell food and things? Andrew? Yes, I move to uh, accept consent, consent agenda A. Okay, second. I'll second it. Okay, thanks, Don. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Uh, I have to abstain, I, I guess. Okay, you're going to abstain. Okay, thank you, Tony. Okay, so that passed. Consent agenda A passed. Tony abstained. Everyone else uh, approved it. Okay, so um, Jen, do we need to remove so B? Through a motion or no? Uh, do we need to remove it or can we just? Um, I think you can just make your comment that you don't need to consider it. And I'll just note that since it was already on the agenda. Okay. Okay. So B is being removed. So the Census Bureau decided not to use our facility? Okay. Yeah. They, um, they had emailed a a few weeks ago and then got back to us that, um, they had sent the email to a lot of the communities that they're working in that worked out. So. Oh, okay. 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 So now we want to add a consent agenda item for the uh, garden club. Dana, can I read it and then they can just vote to add it and vote to pass it? Okay. So, you guys want to add consent agenda item C, request acceptance of a donation comprising of shrubs, flowers, mulch, and trees in the estimated value of $2,519.82 from the Kensington Garden Club to be used to beautify Volunteer Park. Okay, Dinesh is going to make that motion. Thank you, Dinesh. All right. And then uh, second, Tony. Okay, thank you, Tony. Okay, all in favor. She make the motion. So, uh, right. <laughs> any discussion, Don? Yeah, yeah. I just want to make sure that that dollar amount that you read is correct because in the email that we received, it said the cash value is is to the town is twenty five hundred dollars max. Yeah, that's, the that's why I said estimated. I'm sorry, I didn't hear it. I'm, so, I'm sorry, I didn't hear it. So that's fine. I, okay. no, no other discussion. Okay. okay. Can I just add we that that proposal was outstanding? I mean, it really was very detailed and thoroughly yep. put together and extremely professional for a volunteer garden club. I mean, 
it, it would be nice to see everything come across with that kind of detail. Yeah, nice comment, Tony. You're right. Yep. So we look forward to boosters doing that for the signs. Ha ha ha. All right. Okay. Thank you. And um, okay, with that, uh, can uh, all those in agreement with accepting the donation from the Garden Club and moving forward with their proposal say aye? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? None. Okay. Donna? Yes. That was just thank to you. add the item. Now you need just another oh, motion thank to you. approve it. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to take a vote just like we just did. So, uh, hey, Don, Donna, you're... I'll move, I'll move okay, to uh, approve agenda item uh, C. Okay. Thank you. Second. Thank you, Tony. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. So that moves forward. That's great. Fantastic. Okay. Um, well, we have a couple of things before we get on to parks and grounds. One is um, with the pickleball, I think it was a good presentation. I think there's things that we can think about. I'm not sure we could do anything right now. Uh, we can certainly discuss it. Or would you want to discuss it at the August meeting? What's the general sense? Uh, Donna, how about... I, I motion that we table until August. Anybody have any comments on pickleball that they want to bring up tonight then? I, I think I want to go see it. I, I didn't know anything about it. I, I mentioned it in my house and everyone got excited. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I think the feedback is that, that you know, we have a little work to be done. Um, I think it's a good thing. If you can see pickleball, in action it's pretty cool and it's uh it is great for um yeah Denise still having some technical difficulty so yeah, I, I muted him yeah um sorry but it, it, it is pretty cool and it's something that probably at some point the town will want to move forward with but that being said let's table it and then um mm -hmm. we can bring it up in August or the September meeting again the budgets are pretty well done you know unless we come into a boatload of money Okay, um, and then uh, Mike Bannon's request uh, to um, not have to pay for the field use, even though they are under 75% of their roster right now uh, with Berlin residents. Um, so I think what we wanna do, we need to make a motion um, and maybe the motion should be something uh, like, you know, make a motion to waive the fees for the use of softball fields for the, whatever their team name is, um, for this uh, 2020 season. And then we'd second it and then, and then we'd open it up for discussion. It doesn't mean it would pass, um, but we want to, I think tonight we want to make that that vote. So could I have I, a motion made? Don't, don't have the motion to waive the fees because and then if you decide to alter them, waive or alter the fees. Right? Donna's, Donna's uh, frozen. She's uh, frozen. Yeah, well, no, I'm never, okay now. So, um, I, was, I was about to say, Donna, he never asked to have them waived I, from what I heard he asked to be able to pay for um, resident uh, as resident pricing as opposed to non-resident pricing right so I think that's how the motion should read. and you know what you're that's better said that's exactly what I meant you're right you're right so go ahead Andrew Andrew yeah. make the motion uh, I just want to know what the team name is again um so certain bombers or yeah NB bombers. Sometimes it's New Britain on some paperwork, and some paperwork it's New Berlin bombers. So okay. say, the, say the bombers. Okay. Dana, do you have? Hold on, Dana. Dana's got a question. Yeah. Sure. Go ahead. To add the item to the agenda first, and then make the motion to okay modify. Okay, so we're adding the okay. Let's make a motion to add New Britain bombers or NB bombers uh, request to the agenda. Please. Okay, I motion to uh, add Michael Bannon's uh, request for the NB bombers 
to <clears throat> have the rental usage fee for the softball fields be from outside group to an inside group fee. Okay, seconded. Second. Thank you, Tony. All in favor of adding that item to the agenda tonight, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, it's now added to the agenda. Okay, okay so we're gonna do a motion to uh, to potentially alter the fees. Is that to, what you want to say? You want to make a motion to charge them local fees as opposed to non-local. Okay. Yeah, that's I, make a, I make a motion to um, charge the NB bombers the local fee versus the non-local fee as presented tonight. I'll second that, Don. Okay. Um, now you have discussion. Right. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so uh, we'll discuss the item. I'm I'm going to bring up um, what I learned last night, and uh, I just happened to take a drive by Sage. I wanted to see some of the fields in use, and um, when I got to Sage, it was packed, and it was, you know, it's good to see the kids out there playing, but. In regards to softball, the reason why I asked Mike the question is because there were two teams playing a game, and one was this New Britain Bombers, and the other team was there. And I have to say, they had they looked like they were from the same organization, you know, with the same uniforms. Now, he explained the situation, and Robin last night explained the situation to me, and she talked about them – you know, taking them under the wing and they're, you know, they may have to swap some players every once in a while, you know, to fill a team or whatever. So um, I will tell you that when Robin first approached me about a month ago with this, um, and I continue to think the same way, this is just my opinion. I'm just throwing it out. We, ha we have a policy in place 75% or above. I know it's tough for them to get there, but we do have, history of refusing other teams that also couldn't get there um, and we stayed firm with our policy in the past um, and for that reason uh, unless someone can convince me otherwise my opinion is that th they they should be charged out of town rates um, and with that I'll open it up well, that's why I that's why I preface it, Donna, to him. You know, full disclosure that we've had this come up with us many times before, and the commission has always stayed pretty firm with our seventy-five percent policy. I think you know and agree with you that it will open up an issues with several other of the folks that have come to us in the past. Now, that being said, and and what you just commented on, do, do we know for sure? that by him bringing them underneath the wing, uh, that that does not take that number 12 to 24, and his number still stays at eight, where he had opportunity to go to nine to 12, if you're following my logic. Because if he yeah. goes to nine, he gets to 75%. No, actually, he goes to nine, he has 13 kids, and he, so he doesn't oh, get Oh, that's right, my, my mistake, yeah. sorry, you're yeah, right. No, that's okay. Yeah. He, he, I mean, he would have to get you know, up to 15 people, 15 12 point. out of 15. So, um, you know, again, I will just tell you uh, that last night was an eye opener for me because it's, it's, you know, there's two good sized teams out there and all I know is what we see. And, and to his credit, Mike did send Jen who forwarded to me the roster. Cause I, I asked Robin, Last night I said, you know, please have him bring the current roster so that if the commissioners want to look at it, uh, he ended up having Jen pass it to me. And Jen, I'm going to delete it because I it has a lot of personal information on it. But uh, thank you for passing it on. Uh, but it's eight of twelve right now. But I will. There's there is this other group out there um, that unfortunately had problems with their coach. So.
What's the difference of the rental rates between not resident and non-resident for a field rental? Well, are you asking what they are? Yeah, what's what's the rate? What's the rental rate? Just to give you a little bit of history, a couple of years ago, we had a daily rate, which was $65 a day for a non-local group. And I want to say 30 or $35 a day for local group. After a huge assessment and looking at a lot of other towns, Tony, um, we decided to go to an hourly rate similar to very many towns nearby to us. And we tried to get similar rates to what the other towns are charging for local, non-local. So right now, our local rates for field users are $15 an hour, and our non-local rates are $40 an hour, except for Scalise, where it's $50 an hour. Okay. And that's very comparative to other towns. Actually, our local rates are a lot lower than other towns, but that's why we hope every other year we'll go up that $5 to get it in sync with what the other towns are charging. Right. Okay. You know, it just it just really stinks because if you think about it, right, the parents who live in town pay taxes. There's eight there's there's eight of them at the present time. You know, we just and they're it's just hard because they're they're gonna their feeling is going to be, well, we pay taxes in town and now I gotta pay more for out of town just to have my kids play. And so it's a kind of a tough situation. But but to Donna's point, we've said no before. We said no to the Kensington Cannons just last year. Uh, no, I, I know that. And and is it Billy Pettit doing both teams? One's out of town, one's in town this year? Yes. Yeah. So right now, and Billy Pettit hasn't come forward asking for an exception for the other softball team. Right. So right. Um, he even wrote in his email, Terry, just let me know what the fees are. I know I have to pay outside uh, uh, non-local well, fees. And, and Diana, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the year, a couple of years ago for the women's auxiliary, I think we actually just grand, grandfathered them in one time and then they kind of broke up afterwards because they didn't have enough players, remember? Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. Women's, so, women, yeah, the women's softball yeah. team and Harry Veerland's Burnland Soccer Club, soccer we gave club. Yeah. one year. We didn't give them – Full, we gave them half price for one year. Right, but that was when we originally made the change. Right. This, yeah, exactly. Right. right. Yeah. That was three years ago. Right. Then, then we came to the firm policy. But uh, Steve, I, I don't see how I don't see how you can give it an exception if you have this bulldog team that has two teams in Berlin, one paying resident rates, one paying non-resident rates. How do you give this team who doesn't qualify non-resident rates? And there are other non-local teams that play on our fields currently. And then right. we, we charge them full price, right? Yep. So they, you, you would have to make, you'd have to make a lot of, undo a lot of other decisions. Yeah. That's why we have the policy. Yeah. I definitely agree with Dana because, you know, even though Michael has 67% or so, I mean, you know, where you stop? I mean, next team could have, you know, 50%, you know? Yeah. Right. Right. Is, 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 Steve, is Steve Hinchcliffe on still? Uh, I don't want to be on. Yeah, I, I think that's him. You call her five. Yes. Steve? Yes. What do Go you ahead, think? John. What Hello. do you think? Hey, Steve, what do you think of the conversation? I would agree with you and Donna that we should not be making an exception. Okay. Uh, can you can you hear me? Yes. 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 yes can. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm going along with what you had said. There's been others who have asked, and we you know we've had to stick by. And I don't think we should start to make exceptions because they're all going to come after us then. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Hey, is there any any further discussion comments? Okay, hearing none, we have a motion on the table. I believe, um, Dana, can you read back the motion again? Yeah, thank you. Um, all right, the motion was to approve the New Britain Bombers to be charged as a local organization for the 2020 season. Okay. So it's to charge exactly them as what I said. Right. Yeah. To charge them as a local organization. So all in favor.
favor of charging the bombers as a local organization say aye. All opposed say nay. 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 Okay. So his request has been refused. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, what do we have now? Parks and grounds? I just lost my... Uh... Yeah, parks and grounds monthly yep. report. Stephen. Yep. Yep. Okay. I'm going to try to make mine short, but I have a feeling mine's going to go a little long. Um, I want to start yeah. off with the litter at Berlin High School. Currently, right now, since the beginning of June, we've had one guy or two guys go there every single day to pick up trash. Once the kids go back to school and we lose our seasonal employees, we are not going to have the manpower to pick up a bag and a half of trash every day. Mm -hmm. So therefore the complaints are gonna come in even more on Facebook and social media about the mess that has been there. It has been a lot better over the last couple of days with people going down there, neighbors and picking up the trash, um, followed by there's a resident named John who walked by the other day and mentioned to the kids, pick up your litter, and begrudgingly they picked it up. But it seems to be getting better, but it still doesn't change the fact of the amount of garbage that has been dumped in parking lots and all over that tennis court, Sage Park, Brown High School parking lot, and the tennis courts and basketball courts. It's just, McGee has been just as bad. Well, um, there is ample amount of garbage cans. There's recycling bins. We've tried everything and nothing we do has worked. Do we, do we have a sign that's posted there, Steve, um, asking or not asking, but saying, you know, trash is to be picked up or anything like that? I will look tomorrow. I thought it was a part of the new rules when they posted the rules for the tennis courts and basketball courts, but mm -hmm. I will look again. And if okay. so, if not, we will make a sign that says no loitering um, with the town ordinance on it. So I also, I, I, I'm sorry, Jen, uh, just hold on. Last night, just so everybody's aware, when I I got to Sage and I was kind of pissed off, um, so then I said, oh, let me go to the basketball courts because I've gotten a, you know, a couple of calls myself. So yeah. I went to the high school basketball courts. I pulled over and I talked to the uh, young men that were playing. I talked to one individual and I said, you know, is this a pickup league? Or And he said, yeah, you know, everybody just shows up and we pick up games. I said, can you do me a favor? Can you please tell them all to pick up the trash before they leave tonight. Um, we've gotten a lot of complaints, blah, 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 blah. And he kind of looked at me and I said, you know, I really would appreciate it. Get the word out and I'll be back tomorrow morning to see what they look like. And if I see a lot of trash, I'll be back tomorrow night with the cops. That's what I said. One guy, another guy, took offense to that. Hey, no threats, lady, blah, blah. You know, I said, I'm not threatening. I'm just telling you. I gave him my name. I said, I'm on the commission. I said, there's Donna, just too many complaints. Donna, so, next time someone says that to you, just come down to my house and I'll come right back up with you. I have no yeah, problem. No, no, it, it's okay. I, it, 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 it didn't scare me. I mean, honestly, it was all right. <laughs> but, um, all right. but just know but it's in any event, you. Stephen, I apologize. I couldn't get down there this morning. I did drive this afternoon uh, down there, and there were kids playing out there, but it didn't look like a lot of trash. But you guys may maybe have picked it up this, today or already. I don't know. Yeah, but DJ's, I'm interested. DJ's there right around 5 45, 6 o'clock in the morning. And and so he was there today, do you know? Yep. So they left the trash. So, so Not as much. I, I, I mean, think, there might have been two or, we'll say, a half a dozen bottles. Yeah. So, you know, it's a big group of of guys that are playing. And so can, can we get the police to kind of drive by there about 10 o'clock or so when we shut off the lights and so the before other, they're gone? So the other day, the same day, I think it was two, it was Monday. Monday I posted on Facebook that we were keeping an eye on the basketball courts. I also talked to the deputy chief, Chris Susie and asked patrols to take note around 7.30 in the morning when I was getting reports from the dog walkers that they were there and in the evening. And he has uh, told me that they were going to add extra patrols to go by the high school courts to check on people, check on things. 
Okay, so maybe maybe the time to go though for them is I I assume what time the lights go off? Ten. Ten o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Is somewhere right, you know, around ten of ten, or some yeah. or a quarter of ten. I can touch base with him tomorrow and see if he had any luck seeing anyone this week and ask him to adjust his plans for later in the evening. I think that's the time to get it. being heavily used based on the complaints we were getting. Yeah. Yeah. So so I had I had the opposite experience on Saturday and Sunday, and this was around between nine and eleven. I took a ride by and I was watching people play tennis. I was watching people on the track and a bunch of people were playing basketball and I was chatting with the folks playing basketball and they seemed very pleasant. And my, I said, you know, please make sure you keep it clean because you know, blah, 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 blah. And they were very polite and they said, yes, sir. We clean up every time after the end of our game. Now, not sure if that's a different group of play kids playing in the morning versus the nighttime, but um, I, I did have the opposite experience. The only thing that, um, that I did see that, um, we need to be conscientious of is that there are some people that like to rollerblade and then they like to rollerblade in the um, tennis court area. Mm -hmm. That was the only thing that I saw, but that was uh, a brief moment. Someone rollerbladed and then they came out. All right. I mean, is there anything else, Jen or Steve, that you can think that we can do? I, I think signage and continuing conversations with the police is going to be the best thing we do. I think, like Steve said, I think we've seen a little bit of a change since Monday when we took those actions. So hopefully it continues. Well, if it, if it continues to happen, do, do we have the, do we have the um, opportunity to lock it down? lock the fence and basically don't let anybody in there that is what we put on the facebook page that if it continues that we will think to close the course that's what happened in Mainville, and that was actually commented on the facebook page that this is probably probably this is probably the same group that came from plainville and caused them plainville courts to close yeah i mean uh, you know Where is uh, out there yeah I'm, I'm assuming i'm assuming these are non-local student athletes if you want to call them that or you know young adults or are they a combination of everybody. I think it's a combination of everybody based on some of the complaints I've received. I see. Okay. Um, the signage that uh, instead of doing it where it's the ordinance being cited, which, you know, they're not going to want to read, but when you're yeah. exiting the basketball court, you got to walk through the door, putting a sign on the door or right next to the door as you're walking out facing the inside of the court saying, take your trash with you or dispose yeah, of your yeah. trash or just kind of plain language versus, um, you know, the ordinance. Maybe that will be a reminder for somebody when they're walking out. Well, isn't there a litter fee that uh, that a uh, person could get cited for by the police? I, I don't know if there is or not. But that's you, you certainly can always be added to it too. You know, police take notice. The, the tennis courts, uh, basketball, they're not reserving because these are pickup games, or at least yeah. at nighttime. Um, but the tennis courts, Jen, they're not reserving as well. I heard that kind of comment tonight. So, um, the people that return, if it's just, you know, a couple people going on the courts, it's fine. If it's a big group, like when we have, you know, like Debbie reserves them for her park and rec programs, tennis return reserves them if they're doing something. But if it's just, you know, you and Bart going out to play, we don't really follow up on that because it's nowhere. Yeah. Really. yeah. We're not getting complaints from the tennis. <clears throat> I do know that the basketball courts were mentioned at the town council meeting last night, and Aroche is actually also reaching out to school security to see if while they're in the building, they can keep an eye on things. Oh, that's that's positive. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just remembered that. So. Yeah. <clears throat> um, moving on to the next item is the infield at Zippadelli. Over the last week and a half, um, a large section of grass has died, and we reached out to a couple of contractors, had them come down. We ended up taking core samples last weekend. We sent the core samples to UConn and UMass. What we've come to find out is there is a bug that only thrives on bluegrass called the billy bug. The billy bug eats the grass and will only eat bluegrass. 
when we resodded the infield and the outfield perimeter at Zipadelli, we used bluegrass. Mm. After speaking to both professors at UConn and at UMass, they've come up with a, I'll call it an IPM program, how to attack them. Currently, we're working with Atlantic Tur Atlantic. that hopefully will kill the larva that has not hatched yet and will kill a large portion of the billy bugs. The problem is, is so much of the infield has died that it's, it's, it doesn't look good at all. We're going to thatch it tomorrow. We're going to overseed it. Next week, we're bringing a company in and they're going to drill seed it. Hopefully within seven to 10 days, we'll be able to see a turnaround and the field will start looking better. The bad side of this is it's probably going to take us the better part of a year to get these billy bugs under control. And when we resod Sage 1, we know that we are going to go towards a bluegrass, mi bluegrass mixture there. And the same mower that mows Zipadelli does mow Sage 1. At that time, we've already put in an IPM program to apply both chemicals to both fields for probably the next two years. Hopefully sometime in the next couple of weeks, we're going to go to council for a bid waiver so we can cumulatively spend more than $10,000 with both of these companies to attack the billy bugs. So if anybody approaches you with the condition of Zipadelli's infield, we're well aware of it. We are doing our best. It's not going to be a quick and easy fix. That's the end of my report. Well... That's that sucks. Jeez. Wow. Yeah. How much do we think it's going to cost for the repair? And you said over ten grand because you're going to go for a it's waiver. Like well, it's cumulatively through the year. Currently, we hire Central Connecticut Lawn Service to do a bunch of different applications at a lot of other parks, and the same with Atlantic is where we buy primarily all of our fertilizer. And that's budgeted on $9,500 for both companies. So by spending $2,500 with Central Connecticut Lawn Care next week, we'll put us somewhere around twelve or 13000 And that's just for one application. Wow. Oh. have the money in the budget to cover this expense. Um, and we will increase the budget for next year to cover future expenses as well. Okay. Any questions for Steve? No. All right. Thank you, Steve. Hey, Jen. Jen, quick, quick question. Where were all those comments being made? You said on Facebook. Was it? What's the name of the website? Uh, town of Berlin, Connecticut. And the picture, okay. the picture is the town seal. Thank uh, you. Yep. It was. I, I did see it. And it, and it was yeah. shared on both the Buzz and the Talks as well. Yeah. Shared on Berlin. the Buzz Talks and uncensored now. Okay. Ber Berlin Talks? Berlin Talks and Berlin Buzz. Mike Urinaga, the town council member, shared them both there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, Debbie? A uh, couple more things on parks and grounds. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought it was page one yet. Where are the banners? Yeah. Uh, banners update was um, you guys saw a copy of the email I sent to groups the only person i've heard back from is tony who has assured me that the boosters are ready for the august meeting so here's hoping the youth sports or whoever else is going to be doing banners uh will be ready as well the boosters will be ready no no question about it awesome uh sage one update we opened bids today we had seven come in and we are doing a scope review of two of them tomorrow with possibly a third one on monday if neither one of tomorrow's work out so Steve will buy, be Steve and I will be in interviews all tomorrow morning. So we're hoping after tomorrow we'll have someone to move forward with for the council meeting Tuesday night and get that moving. That's it. And can you share anything about the bids that you're looking at tomorrow? Like a mounts or um the low bid, it's all on the town website. The low bid was 167,000 and the high bid was 520-ish. Um, I believe we are I am not sure I can say who we are interviewing because I don't know if that's public knowledge yet. 
Okay. Jen, um, just a question on Sage. So when I was there last night, they have they have a um oh Jesus Christ, a water bubbler, you know, to get water. Like they no. the bombers bring in themselves? No, 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 no. There, yeah, Sage. correct. There's a water fountain near Sage. Yeah. One, there's one near Sage too, and there used to be one up by the pavilion. They so, should all be turned off, right? Correct. All three have been turned off since I was hired 20 years ago. Does that mean, so the piping underneath is old. I'm th again, thinking about the concession stand. Remember how you said it has to have running water? Correct. Right. So do we know if those are would work at all for running water for a concession stand? And again, very simple. And I don't even know if the pipe is the right size and obviously it must be older. But that's something that I, I think it would be helpful to look into because, again, we're doing this field for them not to have some type of even simple concession stand it will be a shame when all other sports have their concession stand running for the most part and, um, you know, they'll never have the opportunity to go back. So. I mean, I can certainly ask, you know, someone in public works. I'm not an engineer, so I have no idea. To be honest, yeah. Can I could you check with I could check with Doug Solik from Facilities and have his plumber go out there. Um, he would have been the one who would have closed off the pipes years ago. Yeah, I know for many years all three were working, um, but like I said, I don't know the last time they've worked from mostly right, because and copper lines being corroded. Right. I'm I'm surprised even the consultant that we hired hadn't brought that up because it's sitting right there. Like I wish I had just gone up to the field myself and saw it because. He, he, you know, when we were discussing it, he was very dismissive. And the fact is that last night I see this thing and I'm like, holy shit, there's pipes. There must have been water. So in any event, I, I do think that's something that we need to look into before we finalize or decide, you know, what's going to be done. So thank Donna, you. I don't I don't want to be the negative Nancy, but I guess I will be. Yeah. Even if ahead. there is running water there, we still need to put some type of septic system in to collect the wastewater. We can't let the wastewater drip right out onto the ground. Right. And that's so there would be a large expense with putting the septic system in. And I think that's why we've kind of primarily focuses towards Sage 2, hopefully when it ha phase two, when it happens of putting a building there, which we would then connect to the main sewer line. Yeah. OK, well, I, I appreciate that. I think it's something, you know, if someone could check it out, that would be helpful. I'd really like to, again, I think it, when I went up there, again, I'm not an engineer at all, obviously. But when I go up there, and if we ever had someone to the public say, what do you mean there's no running water? You know, here's just, uh, the fountain right here. There had to be some at some point. So in any event, I think it's something that needs to be answered. And I'd like an answer anyway. So thank you. Yep. Okay. Okay, so Jen, so um, the process now that you guys have for, you're going to go through the bids, and then you'll go to the council directly for the next council meeting, or how does that work? Yeah, we're, we're going, we will be on Tuesday, July 21st council meeting to award the bid to the vendor that is decided. Okay, is there some way the commissioners can be made aware of the decisions or have some knowledge of this? Sometimes. Uh, and again, I don't know if the council will ask any questions of the commissioners. I mean, we can want tell the you, commissioners to speak to it. We can tell you what our plan is going into the council meeting, but it won't be definite or because until it's voted on by council. Right, but you'll have your recommendation, right? Yep, we'll have so that I, next Tuesday. Okay, so perhaps um, there's some way that we could. Yeah, we could send you. I could send you a copy of the agenda item that Steve and I will be writing. And, and to explain it a little bit more, I mean, I'll probably attend the council meeting, but. Yeah, the agenda, anyone... the agenda item will explain who we're choosing and why. Yeah. And then you can talk about the others and maybe why not just for our commission so that they know. So. Yep. Oh, okay. Okay. Any questions, guys, on any of that? Nope. Okay. All right, Deb. Okay, I sent in my uh, my monthly report that just talked about us getting the pool up and running. 
it was uh, it was not 100% up to the standards that I would have normally liked it to be because I'm I like to be very thorough on a lot of things, but we did the best that we could to get it open in the uh, the shortened time that we had. We were we're looking at things daily. Um, we've already made adjustments to the number of people that were registering based on the space that we have on the pool deck. And we're going to continue to monitor that. We've already made adjustments on um, how much time people can register for. It was it was once a day and up to three times a week. But we found people that were there for the first session, and then they knew there were spots in the second and wanted to register for that. So now we we have opened that up so they can go online and and register. They still have to leave the pool area because our the custodians come in and clean everything, but. We've um, we've opened that up, so we're getting some more people that are staying through the day when the weather's nice. We've unfortunately there's been a lot of days with a lot of storms, and there's a lot of people have been cut short. But um, no one has come back looking for any type of refund, which is good because we were pretty set on not issuing any refunds for the dollar fee. Um, I know today, the last actually the last couple of days, we've been getting a lot of pushback from a couple groups about wearing their mask, not wanting to wear it. I guess one woman was very vocal today, uh, mm -hmm. saying, uh, making some comments about the CDC. But we, the staff has been very good. I think that they've been very patient, considering some of the things that they've had to deal with. For the most part, people are very good. The kids are wearing their masks when they need to, which is awesome. So, I, I mean, I think it's it's working out so far. We'll just continue to monitor it as the as we go along and uh, and just hope that we can get some more, the, the numbers can go up. And today we had, I think we were, I think we had 32 the first session and 35, which we maxed out the second session, which is great. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll look at it. We just, we're concerned because we had to mark the deck, which is what was recommended so that people had designated areas we were so rushed to do it that we, you know, in, in hindsight, we would have made some more adjustments and been able to get more spots on there, but it's marked in paint now. So we're kind of, um, we're kind of locked in, but we've created some temporary spots if we need to, to get more people. Oh, great. Thanks for rushing and getting it all done and before July 4th too. Yeah, we tried. I, I mean, I wouldn't, as I mentioned in the report, I would not have been able to do it without the aquatics director, Chris or Zagorski coming on. Um, he did a lot of research on with the Red Cross and he's been doing staff training and it's it's hard because they can't do anything where they, where they touch each other. So we can't do backboarding drills. We can't do any saves that are part of our normal training process, but he's doing the best he can to have them go through scenarios and, um, you know, just, the more that they can kind of work together and just talk about things if something happens is important. So we're, he's he's doing a great job and would not be able to operate the pools without him in the office. That's great. Yeah, I just want to say Debbie really did a fantastic job to get this up and running in two weeks is incredible. Um, and like she said, we have a phenomenal staff working for us that is really doing really well out there. So. It's it's been a whirlwind for the last couple of weeks, but it's working out so far. How about the virtual camp, Debbie? So we didn't we we originally had intended to uh, team up with with Newington to do a virtual camp, and they launched it a little bit before we did, and realized that the response was awful. <laughs> really, so we we pulled the plug on it pretty fast. He. Newington had a lot more um, money invested in staffing. They were going to have quite a few staff work and they were hoping to get some of that money back. And, you know, they surveyed the town, the townspeople said, yes, we would sign up. And then I think when they sent it out, they got like two kids one week. So they oh. had to just, yeah, they had to just kind of scrap it totally, it which I get people don't want their kids in front and it wasn't a full day in front of the computer. There was a lot of you're on for a little while and then they, they're giving you things to do. And, you know, then you come back at one point and they were going to bring out kind of what we're doing. We, uh, Jen sent out the flyer for our remote program that we're doing. 
Um, so we've had a few people sign up for it, which is great. So Katie Wykander, who was one of the summer fun site directors, has been in the office. She puts together a flyer each week. So when people sign up, it's we just did a small like five dollar fee just to to know that we had people that were interested. And she's had contests, um, sidewalk chalk contest. Uh, she's doing a scavenger hunt, and then we have some prizes of stuff that we have here to give out to people. Um, so that's she's gotten a few responses. We sent it out to all of the summer fun people from last year. There's not they don't have to be in front of the computer at all. She sends a flyer. She does a little goodie bag with like a couple arts and crafts projects that they can do whenever they feel like it. And then some other things. So we're, we'll continue to do that just to offer something to, to people. Uh, we, we've also, I don't know if anyone looks and, and Don, if you, if you go on and you, and you like the face, the town Facebook page, you'll see a lot of our posts that go up, but we were, um, we're doing a logo contest for the park and rec department because we don't have our own logo and a lot of Park and Rec departments do. So we just started that. I think it, Jen, did it go on yesterday? Uh, two days ago, I think. Two days ago. So um, so that's out there. We'll see what kind of response we get. Right now, we just limited it to 18 and under. We're trying to get a kid to do it. I did notice one of the comments was, I think someone who's over 18 might be interested. So if we don't get any interest, we can open it up to the whole town. But we thought we would kind of start with the kids first to see you know, if they could come up with some things and Vernon just did one and they had an eighth grader and it's it's actually pretty cool what they came up with. So we thought it was just another way to get the community involved. And once we get it, we'll start putting it on all of our information. We'll put it on our the staff shirts once we do those. And, you know, just thought it would be something different for the community. Okay. Very cool. It's hard. I mean, people don't want to. We've, we've offered a lot of other virtual programs through Skyhawks and everyone in the, we, we've gotten no response really for people signing up. So the really with the restrictions, all we could do is just offer as much as we could and and hope that people would do it, but they're not. The tennis numbers are, are great. We, we were almost full in all the classes and the lessons have been going pretty well. So, and those were in person, people like that. But the other, the virtual ones just aren't quite as successful as we had hoped. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, Jen. Uh, Community Senior Center update. There's not really much one. There's a PBC meeting tonight and uh, Tom R. Carey is providing his update, but he's also scheduled a meeting with myself, Debbie and Tina for next week sometime. We just have to get on the calendar. He wants to talk, talk, start talking about community outreach and try to get them involved in their opinion. So we're moving forward on that. So I'll have a better update on that in August. Great. That's awesome. It. Any questions? I think that's the agenda. It is. Uh, any other comments? So, so Jen, before the meeting started, you said that we may be face to face in August. Is that accurate? That's hopeful. I mean, Debbie and I are hoping that by August, the community center might be open at least for, you know, us to have our meetings and maybe a few rentals that if we have any, but, um, well, it, we're going to play it by ear. Okay. I have to find out if we still need to have a virtual option or a call-in option, which would limit us at the community center because we don't have phones in our multi-purpose room. So that's kind of where we're limited at. Okay, thanks. Yep. Okay. Where's, where's Steve? He's got to make the motion. Yes. <laughs> I'm right All here. Right. I, make a want... I make a motion we adjourn. All right, Steve. Second. <laughs> <laughs> Don, you're bad. <laughs> All right, I, I, I second the motion. All right. All in favor to just. Bye. 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 All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night, everybody. Yeah. Bye. Good night. Take care. Have a good one, Bye. guys. Bye.